we got more and more people joining us on these runs and we got quite a little group of people running. So we decided we would try and form a formal running club. But the hardest thing was what colour were we going to go for and the name that we were going to go for on the club. So we thought long and hard, hard about it and actually took ages to come up with a name. We had one lunchtime meeting we said we're not going until we got this name sorted. It's the last thing we've got to do. We all sat around and eventually we came up with a name, David Lloyd Redway Trotters. We went away and I think me and one of the other people, we thought about it and thought, we can't call ourselves Trotters. And I said to him the next day, Trotters, I'm just thinking a Dell boy. He, yes. said, he said, I'm just thinking of cow, um, cows, cows and Trotters. <laughs> but why don't we go for Redway Runners? We got into a pattern of doing, before lockdown, in the normal life, of doing three sets of beginners groups a year, one in January, one after Easter and one after the summer. And each set of beginners groups would have like 400 people booking onto them. So we'd get massive numbers for our beginners groups. Hi, my name is Michelle Lewis. Ten years ago, you'd have been lucky to see me run to the end of the road. These days, running is second nature to me. From marathons to park runs to put in my own running group through their paces. You'll often see me in suitably loud attire, getting ready to pound the pavement. And here's a secret, if I can do it, you can too. There's so many wonderful and inspiring stories in the world of running. And not just running, some of my favourite tales involve those who take to their wheelchairs, bikes or simply their own trusty feet in an attempt to get fitter, faster or just have some fun. In this podcast, I'm going to be in conversation with some of the most inspiring and fascinating of these people. Remember, it's your time, your speed, your way. The only person you need to keep up with is yourself. This week, I am with MK Redway Runners founder, Martin Lawrence. Now, Martin and I go back, we've worked out about 28, 29 years when we both used to work at Abbey National, which most of you will know as Santander nowadays. Of course, I had to find out, how did Martin get into running? Because how I remember our lives back then, it was in pubs <laughs> after going out, you know, having a hard day at work. So, Martin, over to you. When did your running tell begin? Hi, Michelle. I don't know if it all went, went wrong or all went right, really, because, yes, as you say, we used to um, go drinking in the pubs of Milton Keynes um, after work very often. But I think... What probably happened is one day at Santa, um, Abbey National Santander, someone was in, I was going to the gym and someone encouraged me to go running outside. And um, I, my initial thought was, no, I can't go outside, I might be seen, someone might see me running. But eventually he bludgeoned me into going running and I was going to the gym and we went out and did a lap of Teardrop Lakes, which is about, um, I found out later, about two and a half miles. When I got back, I was absolutely worn out. I thought I was dying. Um, wondered why I did it. And as I thought about it a bit more, I thought, no, I've got to go out and do that again. And that was really where it all started. And I then just kept running um, and running and running. Um, quite a bit. We went out in a little group of friends um, from work at um, Santander doing a, um, probably up to about five or six miles we got up to eventually in my lunchtime. Can then, I just ask you, yeah. like, how many years ago was this? Oh, yeah, I've been trying to work that out myself. I think it was probably in the mid-90s, late 90s, so probably running just over 20 years or so, So you were think. a late runner then? So quite late, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, probably, um, yeah, probably in my 40s or so, 40s or so, something like that about that. Um, started to go running and there was a little group, of, we ended up a little group of five or six of us and we used to go around Teardrop Lakes and First and Lake here, Milton Keynes, doing a five, six mile route three times a week. And that was very good and really enjoyable. So you found it like more for the social side, fun? Yeah, the exercise, going outside, getting a break from work in your lunchtime um, and do a run and um, having a chat to other people I work with. And um, that was the thing I most probably enjoyed going to work for. I shouldn't say that, should I? <laughs> but um, the most thing I probably enjoyed um, in the work. And that was the th- um, when I got made redundant. That was the biggest thing I knew I was going to miss, uh, not having people to go running with. And then what happened from there? Well, I decided that I needed to do keep up the running and um, I couldn't run on my own. That would just be, um, just wouldn't suit me and my running style. So I thought I'd join a gym in Milton Keynes somewhere. So we looked around various gyms 
um, how much they cost, where they're located, what we fancied, talked to them about running. And eventually we settled on David Lloyd um, near Wynn Lake because um, they assured us they did lots of running and um, lots of running groups. Um, so we joined David Lloyd. Um, and But they didn't do quite as much running as I would have liked. Um, they put a 10-week a running course on, probably because I bludgeoned them into doing it. <laughs> and we went out for a short run. So I, get to, I got to meet a few more people who started running. And then that finished, and they put another one on. That finished, and um, they said, well, there wasn't really enough interest in running, so they weren't going to do any more running classes. But by which time I found a few people who were running in David Lloyd, and we went running out together. And as the time went on, we got more and more people joining us on these runs, and we got quite a little group of people running. So we decided we would um, try and form a formal running club. And... um, and got in touch with England Athletics to see what we needed to do. And they said we had to do all this paperwork for um, uh, to get a, a club in place. So we filled all the paperwork in, the picket, and some of the, most of which was quite straightforward. But the hardest thing was what colour were we going to go for and the name that we were going to go for on the club. And so we thought long and hard, hard about it and actually took ages to come up with a name for the club. Did and one of them involve the name of the, the Concrete Cows? Um, probably. Um, <laughs> but one of them, <laughs> we said, we had one lunchtime meeting, we said, we're not going until we got this name sorted. It's the last thing we've got to do. We all sat around and eventually we came up with a name, David Lloyd Redway Trotters. And we went away and... I think me and one of the other people, we thought about it and thought, we can't call ourselves Trotters. And I said to him the next day, Trotters, I'm just thinking a Dell boy. He, yes. said, he said, I'm just thinking of cow, um, cows, cows and Trotters. <laughs> thought, Why don't we go for Redway Runners? And um, that's when we settled on that straight away. And we came up with a colour green because we couldn't use a colour of another running club locally. So that stopped us using a few other colours. And green was the colour of David Lloyd. So we came up with the name of David Lloyd Redway Runners. And we just started the club. We, we our aim was so we could pay the the fees that we needed to pay to just charge people five pound, just the minimal fee, and we needed ten people. If we could get twenty 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 five people, that would mean we'd have two years crack at organising the running club, and we feel we'd given it a good test. We started the running club, and people just loads and loads of people joined and we were just running in the mornings at this stage we then started doing evening runs we then started doing sundays and three or four years ago someone said well we're more of a community running club why don't we change the name to redway runners so we went for all the process and changed the name of the club to redway runners can um, i ask what made you think that in the beginning that you were drawing people around Milton Keynes to be part of you. Is it, do you think, the fact that they were seeing so much green in large numbers <laughs> hitting the red way? Or was there, did you do a lot of social media? Was there a lot of advertising? Not particularly a lot of advertising. I mean, when we started the club, I'd been a member of a couple of running clubs previously. And um, I think I learned from that. I went to one running club and um, the first night I went, to a, or went along, nobody talked to me. And um, they told me there were three groups, a slow, medium and fast group. And I thought, hmm, um, I'm probably going the medium group. That would yeah. be the group for me. And I could see, I worked out which was the easier group and thought, no, so I need one of these two other groups. And for some reason, I didn't even ask which group I wanted. And I thought, right, this looks like the medium group. Yeah. I'll go with them. And so I started with them, found out it, after a mile or two, it was the fast group. I was <laughs> hanging on for dear life to them. And after like three miles, I just lost them and they'd gone ahead and... Um, didn't even regroup. Uh, uh, didn't regroup at all. And there was me and another chap who was his first night as well. And um, he knew the area. I didn't know the area. I wasn't around, wasn't locally this running club. And I didn't know the area. And um, we managed to get back to base. I went a few more times, but mainly the runs were in the evening I wanted to run in the morning and then um, so I sort of learned a lot from these things yeah uh, I felt um, what I wanted to make sure is we had a fun social running club so straight from day one when we set Redway Runners up I always said the principles of the club are going to be um, fun and social running club as well as making it value for the runners and for the benefit of runners as well it's going to be a club that's going to be there for the benefit of other people so we had a very much a focus of not focusing on the elite runners or the very fast runners you know I'm not a fast runner I'm, I'd like to say, always call myself um, mid-table mediocrity so we always try to focus on that 
And I think that just stuck and lots of people understood that. And they saw us at the local park one in Milton Keynes in our green t-shirts and more and more people joined. We then decided we ought to start some beginners groups and we didn't expect many for the beginners groups. Um, and eventually we were taking, we do got into a pattern of doing before lockdown in the normal life of doing three sets of beginners groups a year one in january one after easter and one after the summer and each set of beginners groups would have like 400 people booking on to them so we'd get massive numbers for our beginners groups and wow. not everybody stuck with the beginners groups but they graduated at the milton Keynes park one and then they go on to do lots of other things like um, we said earlier about people going on to do marathons or um, ultras, ultras and triathlons and all those sort of things it's just so great to see people and starting their running days with railway runners and staying with us um, people just seem to enjoy the social and the fun side they find the groups that they want in the club and go with them so it um, started with how many initially it started with about 10 of us and um, what year was that that was year 2000 so this year we're coming up to our 10th year of railway runners um, on the 1st of January 2021. Um, 2010. 10 2010. Uh, sorry, uh, we started in 2000, at the end of 2010, 31st of December. We've been running together as a group, but as a formal running club, we started on the 1st of January 2011. So, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, 1st of January 2021 will be 10 years of Railway Runners. So, you was, was you planning on doing anything really big as a club? No. Or... Uh, oh, uh, for Just our 10th anniversary. Yeah, yeah we, we started doing a whole load of plans. We've got a working group. Um, we had our first meeting to sort of organise things, but then um, COVID, lockdown yeah. came and we've sort of all gone a bit on hold. But we've got some plans, they're still progressing. We're, um, there's a book being produced at the moment by some of our club members. Um, we were intending to have an event. We're not quite sure what will happen with that now, obviously, so we want things to settle down. And we had a whole series of ideas, and some of them are still going ahead, so we're hoping to make next year a good year for the, you know, a great year for the club. Um, with various things. Tell us about the book. You're saying there's a book being yeah, drafted yeah, up. Yeah, just trying to get the history of the club over the years. Um, you tend to do these things, but you don't document them. Or exactly. you do at the time, you put them on Facebook. Of course, they're gone later. So we're trying to get some of the stories and some of the um, people who have been with the club since the beginning to you know write their stories, um, some of the memories... Someone said to me once, a lot of things were about myths and legends, and I think um, that's very true, and trying to sort of go back on the stories that yeah. are in, uh, known in the club you know, over the years that we've had. So I was trying to make sure we get some of those included in the book as well. Going are you going to do like the history of Milton Keynes as well? Like, Just for those that are listening on this podcast, we've just done over a five-mile little chatty run around Newport Pagnell together, <laughs> and um, Martin's very... Um, I say he's got a uh, job as a historian as well <laughs> in selling Milton Keynes, and it'll be interesting. Like I learned, I didn't know Newport, Newport Pagnell had a beach. You know, is all this going to be in the book? Um, probably not some of this stuff. But what we do tend to do in the club um, when we could operate as normal um, was we do a few fun runs like that, where we do history runs and quiz yeah. runs. And we've done one in Newport Pagnell, and we took people round. Uh, I'm not sure we included the beach in it, but we included the hospital the Aston Martin, the Iron Bridge and all the, some of the quirky bits of history that people don't know about as well and, and they are great fun and we've, we, we tend to do one or two of those a year and we do a few special runs, last year we had a great run it, we did our first drama run and um, we enacted a play during the course of a run over um, three or four miles and we found a story of um, a church, a disused church now in Milton Keynes, where there were a couple who were due to get married. It was going to be the thousandth wedding at this church, um, just before it was about to take place. They found out the church didn't have a license for weddings, so all thousand weddings um, were nullified. And um, but the bride and groom suddenly moved their wedding to another church in New Bradwell and got got married there. I think I got the one. And um, so we reenacted it with a bride and groom and everybody dressed as the congregation. And we had the vicar and um, best man and we halted the wedding. And the the local church got involved as well. And the vicar started to conduct the wedding service for us. And he got his guitar out and played. And, oh wow! It was just a, a fabulous sunny morning as well helped and it was just a that was just like another one of the myths and legends of the running club and it was actually a fantastic thing to do we were planning to do one again this year um based around sport because Milton Keynes is the city of sport this year um but we've had to again put that on hold 
But you obvious. you were saying on our little run that um, you have got a race that is going to go live in, in a couple of weeks' time in September. Yeah, we... Which, this podcast will be past that time. Yeah. But in September, you're going to have a race. Yeah, we do a number of runs in the club. Um, event, races and runs. Um, we have something called Beat the Barge, Thursday and Relay, MK24, which is a 24-hour race. But because of the lockdown... Um, we looked at doing, we had to cancel a number of those races, but then we've also looked at doing some of them in, could we adapt them to the environment we've got? Um, but then we started to think, well, perhaps could we do a new race, or sorry, a new event, but adapt it to the COVID um, guidelines to make sure it can go ahead. It, it yeah. can go ahead and we can follow the right rules. So the first thought was, well, ideally, we'd like to do it somewhere completely away from the general public. So if we run around a lake, there's a wee general public about social distancing, gives you difficulties, lots of opportunity for people to complain or, and things like that. So we tried to look at a number of venues that we'll see if we could do an event. So we approached areas like Cranfield Airfield, um, the Milton Keynes Bowl, um, we looked at a private lake and eventually we settled on the Daytona International Go-Karting track, which used to be called the James Hunt Centre apparently, um, in Milton Keynes and they were very keen to work with us so we, we put on a 5k event which is five laps of the international track and it seems that nobody else has ever done a um, a run on that on that track. Yeah, you, we talk a lot about the runners, and I know, like on your t shirt, I see Redway runners. Do you have wheelchair races? Um, because Milton Keynes is perfect with the Redways for wheelchair races. Yeah, we tried to. Um, we haven't been approached, to be honest with you, and um, we are very keen to be sort of. Uh, supportive of everybody running and um, we've had a whole load of our runners have done different courses in supporting um, different aspects of running and a lot of our runners have done the guiding course for blind runners and um, I've got a group in the club where I um, if I get any requests to do any any of these sort of activities then I've got a team that can should be able to help um, but we haven't had that many um, approaches and um, we have got one blind runner in the cl- club and he has a guide and, he, and in the club we've got about six or seven guides that he, he can run with and he's got one regular guide that he runs with a lot, so um, Manette, but we can certainly su- hopefully support um, those sort of things and our event like Daytona would be perfect for like, Yeah, that's what I was thinking, well. brilliant. But, um, We'd love to have more, more diversity. More, more diversity. Yeah. Um, we've got the infrastructure, so people haven't tried running. Um, get in touch with us. We can accommodate them in our beginners courses. Um, if you're already running, then we can support it as well. We've had a few requests for guide runners, and we've always tried to um, support those. I think one of them was for some one one of our guys to run in three hours ten minutes on a marathon. So we had trouble um, finding a guide runner to do that <laughs> pace. That was the problem. But what we then did was we split it down. They each did a certain part of the course um, so they could help them to do it. Um, so we've done that as well. But no, we'd we'd like to get more involved in that side. Um, Are you also in the club? Especially, I don't know if you've noticed with the English athletics and that that they've and other um, athletic type authorities where they've put mental health qualifications up, you know, for us runners and leaders to to do, ready for when um, our groups get back up. Has Redway Runners been heavily involved? Um, we do have mental health champions in the club for, the, um, for Redway Runners, and we've had a group um, just looking at their mental health areas and see what we can do to help people um, get back into running. Um, so we've done a bit of work on that. Um, yeah. How do you how do you feel, or is it not something you've thought about yet, about uh, mental health of the Redway runners because there's not been that social? You've said at the beginning yeah. it's all about you know being social, having fun, yeah. but they've lost that for a couple of months during the lockdown. Yeah. They're getting it back now, yeah. but. Um, I noticed myself in my own group, there are anxiety levels high with some members. Do you have, obviously you'll have that at Redway Runners because you've got over 3,000 yeah. members. How have you got 
Yeah, when, any steps? Yeah, when the lockdown first started, I was very concerned because obviously the club virtually almost went into a shutdown and we weren't able to do much. So we gave it a lot of thought. Uh, we tried to, uh, so we could keep the club active as much as possible during the lockdown. So we did a number of, um, of things. We started to put daily challenges up to the runners on our Facebook page and they're still going on at the moment. But we also did, um, we started to do a weekly quiz night as well um, via Facebook. So every Saturday night was quiz night. Yeah. So we did those for I think 10 or 11 weeks during the key part yeah. of lockdown and they were really well received and people enjoyed them and we got lots of people listening to them. We also had a Friday night, I think it was Good Friday, where we did Redway Runners Got Talent and we, are, we put an appeal out for anybody who's got any talents that we could share and we had lots of videos sent in to us and people did special bits and oh, pieces wow. for us and we kept playing them every sort of five or ten minutes during the course of the, the evening and um, that went down really well as well and we've done a virtual run so we tried to keep the club as active as possible we're now getting back into running we're taking tentative steps to get started because um, we're, we're such a big club what we do is... Um, we were worried that the runs might get inundated with 30 or 40 people turning up in one place. It could get us a bad name or a bad reputation. We've asked the... Um, we have to now book all our runs and we've yeah. made them only available to Redway runners, unfortunately. You know, we've got a policy where normally people come for two weeks, can try us, and if they like us, they join for that massive £5 investment. Um, <laughs> but we had to... Uh, we just put that on hold for the moment and people have to book them via our membership system and um, they get that way back into the runners. We had a problem with our beginners group. They were supposed to graduate at the Milton Keynes Park run, but because of lockdown, that got cancelled because the park runs um, stopped happening as well. Um, but what we've done is we put on for those, for those groups refresher courses as well. So they've had um, up to three weeks to get back into the running. Really? If they've kept going during lockdown, a lot of people haven't kept yeah. going during lockdown, and then they'll be able to graduate at the, at the Daytona 5K, with, Daytona 5000 we're doing, so that's a 5K. Um, or otherwise they can run a not park run or do there's a couple of local events, um, running routes that are set up a 5k in distance so they can do those so they've got lots of opportunities to try and do their 5k and graduate from their park run and we're just starting to think about getting um, beginners groups started again um, we haven't gone down the route yet of doing return to running we've tried to get the club back up and running first of all sense, and then, yeah. so get the big bit done get the club moving again and then we can start to think about other aspects of getting people back into the club you you've mentioned a few times about your fee of five pounds. Yeah, I believe this has not not changed from the first moment that the group set up. It's been five pounds throughout for the year to yep. join. Yep, yep. The yeah. club runs on the first of April to the first of March, and we set it at five pounds when we first started the club. It's all run by volunteers, so we try to keep the. I'm quite. Frugal, if that's the right word. That's been called other things. Um, um, so we try to keep our cost base as low as possible. If we do any activities, then they're charged for as they are. Um, but yeah, it's five pound, and the club's got a um, an okay bank balance, so um, we do okay on it. And since we started, I probably haven't mentioned, but um, one of the amazing things of the club is how we've grown over the years. And at the end of March last year, we went up to 3,600 members of Obey Runners. Wow. So we're massive. We're probably one of the biggest running clubs in the world where they actually meet. We're not yeah. a virtual running club. Um, we actually meet and have regular runs. Um, so, no, we kept it at £5. You've got an option to add the England Athletics fee onto that as well. If you want to, you don't have to. Um, we're covered by... The way we structured the club is you're, you're covered for insurance from another... Um, affiliation we've got but if you wanted to add England Athletics on so you get your race li- uh, what we call a race licence um, you can do that and that's an extra um, extra fee for doing that Yeah. So, but that's then optional for the members yeah. Um, yeah. we talk a lot about beginners and newbies and the fun and the social mm. but yeah. Milton Keynes has its own marathon mm. and you know records are being broken it is getting seen as a growing marathon you know in the size it's getting big and Redway runners you have got some very fast runners coming up yeah in you know in your group yeah. um what what 
steps do you have in place for them? And, you know, can you name a few of them? Yeah, we have some very good runners. I mean, um, and uh, Milton Keynes Marathon is a growing marathon, as you say. Roadway runners get heavily involved with them. Um, the race director for Milton Keynes Marathon weekend, which is usually in May, is a roadway runner. And we heavily support um, that event with marshals and helpers and um, the organisation crew. Um, I was on it for a few years myself. And um, yeah, we have some great runners in the club. We try to, we've got a lot of sessions. Um, a lot of our sessions are actually based at the easier runners. We call them step up because they're stepping up to the club runs is a phrase that we came up with, we coined and you actually use quite widely now. But in terms of a phrase we coined in the club was people were stepping up into the club runs because they didn't feel they were quite ready for um, club runs. Um, and what we've also adapted, we haven't got so many of them, is some quicker runs as well in the club. So we have some paced runs and we've got some at 7.30 minute miles, so they do about 5 or 6 miles. And we've got some at 6.40 minute miles, so they run for about 5 or 6 miles. And um, we also do interval sessions as well when we take part in the cross country, which tends to focus on the quicker runners, it seems, the cross country yeah. um, leagues. I've certainly found when I run it, I'm certainly near the back of the, um, the crew. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, we've got some very um, quick runners. We've got a chap who, um, um, who joined us from Albania and he came along his first week in his plimsolls because he's seen us out running. And he now runs half marathons and the cross country and he's right up at the top and he got selected to run for the um, GB in the cross country, um, Genshi. Oh, wow. So he has been doing very well. He's been out for a while with injury, so a bit of a shame. Um, but there's a number of um, runners who like the social side and I tend to find that the fast runners often, um, I often wonder if there's enough in the club to keep them satisfied, but often their, white, their other halves run with the club as well. So oh, okay. I think they find that nice. They can run with a club and there's not necessarily the pressure. Oh, we expect you to go out there on Saturday and or Sunday and perform in this race. Now, if you want to go and do that race for Redway Runners, that's great. You know, and I'm, there's you no know, pressure. And there's no pressure for them to go out and train and be focused for it. It's their own, you know, their own goals. I've, I noticed myself last year when I experienced Cyprus Marathon when I was out there seeing this large green army <laughs> at the finish and there was the lead woman was actually from Redway Runners. Um, Amy? Is that no, Abby. Abby. Abby, yes. Um, Abby um, is one of our uh, runners. She's been with us from the start. And we in the club what we do is a couple of trips a year overseas and um, last year we went out to Cyprus to do the marathon and there's a half marathon and various races and we took a massive number out there I think it was 60 or 70 runners you um, took over the podium we, yeah, we, we certainly did <laughs> and I think it was probably because there was free beer at the finish of yes the, uh, that was thing. that was good yeah and that was very very good um, beer or Prosecco yeah no it was great um, we had a great weekend um, I enjoyed it so much I went back and um, go back now and do the Cyprus four day challenge um, which is another fantastic event in Cyprus uh, you know it's a great little island and um, very friendly people and hoping we can go back there in November and do that but now we have a couple of trips a year we've had more tour already this year we've been out and done the, um, the half marathon in March we just about got one in time I was going to say squeezed it in squeezed it in the other one's supposed to be Sofia in Bulgaria in October and who knows whether that'll happen or not Fingers um, crossed. It's all very fluid, isn't it? Those sort of things. Yeah, true. <laughs> so what's the plan going ahead then with Redway Runners? You're at 3,600 plus at the moment. What, you've got a book coming out. Yeah, um, really, for me, I mean, I was thinking when we were doing the annual general meeting a month or so ago, which we had to do on Zoom this year, um, what were the plans for this year? I think for me, 2020 is very much about getting the club back up and running yeah. and getting us back to where we were because everything's almost come to a halt. So the plans we had for this year with various events and activities we were going to do, it's probably more a case of um, just getting us back up. So in, hopefully in 2021, we can get back to normal and it's perhaps it's a chance just to change one or two things. I think a lot of us during lockdown have taken stock of our lives and um, what we want from running and things. So, you know, make sure we incorporate those and some of the good things that we can do as well. And just to round up, I'm just curious a bit about you. So how many marathons have you done? <laughs> um, I've done, I think, eight marathons. I've got to say marathons aren't my favourite. Um, I've done New York, Paris, London, 
Amsterdam and um, they're I've not done my Amsterdam favorites. and Paris. Again. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I good. loved Amsterdam. I yeah. didn't like Paris. <laughs> oh, I, I did Paris first time. Second, I did. I think six of the marathons, and then said I'm doing no more. Um, Everyone once says I, Once that. I broke my four hour marathon time, um, I thought right, I'm retiring from it. I'm never doing it again. Now my daughter runs as well, Sarah, and she's doing pretty well. And um, she decided that I should do the London Mar- We should do the London Marathon together. So um, I made a return and did the London Marathon, and then we decided we'd do Paris together as well. And um, you've done New York as well. I've done New York as well. So um, yeah, I've done those ones, and um, they're not my favourite distance. You haven't mentioned Milton Keynes Marathon. No, no, strange. I haven't done that one. Um, <laughs> I'm sticking to half marathons. Half marathons are my favourite distance, and I'll stick to those. Um, my favourite running is probably just social running, going out running and chat. You probably found that this morning on our run. Yes. I just love like, going out <laughs> running and chatting. And since lockdown allowed you to run with different people, I've just it's just been great because I've now got a pattern of running with lots of different people all during the week. Yeah. And it's very social and very much fun. Um, just as well it's not about time because my I've spe- uh, slowed down so much uh, and I'm quite getting worried about doing my first race so I have to go and do a half marathon soon but <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say to anyone just to round this up who mm. um, is thinking about running oh, I would say go for it I would say do it um, what have you got to lose I sort of talk about low-bay runners you know if you've not never been running before join one of our beginners groups It'll cost you a fiver, um, price for a coffee or maybe two coffees. And if you don't enjoy it, don't carry on. But we hope. Uh, so many people in Redway Runners have said to me, it's life-changing. Um, there's one guy in the club, and um, just at the start of lockdown, he had a heart attack. And he very nearly died. And he survived it. And the doctor said the only reason he survived is because he was running. Because of his running and he says to me now you know red way runner saved his life and for me that is so touching and um it's just you know just realize what it brings to your life running so get out there run enjoy running and make new friends and have a few drinks as well along the route (laughs) i hope you enjoyed this week's running tales podcast please 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 leave us a rating or review wherever you listen it helps other people find us so they can listen too Thanks for listening and I'll see you next week for another running tale.